And now joining me here on March Madness Men's Basketball on NCAA Digital, three players from the University of San Francisco. Uh, one of the teams that we're going to be talking about, certainly in the field of 68. I'm very confident they will be in the NCAA tournament. Had a great year in the West Coast Conference. But I want to go a little big picture, obviously, in what is happening in the world uh, that is more important, obviously, than basketball. And I'm joined by uh, Volodymyr Markovetsky. He is from the Ukraine, and his teammates, Dmitry Yunyi and Yalyan Mazalski, both from Belarus. Um, Vala, I want to start with you about just what this has been like. You're all the way in San Francisco uh, as you're watching reports of what is happening in your native land in Ukraine. So I'll start my little story. So right before all this situation, like this guy can prove this. Everybody in the team and all the team asked me about this situation, about Russian Ukraine conflict. And every time I say, like, I don't believe it. Like, I can imagine, I can believe, like, Russia attack Ukraine. Like, I believe in only good things. So one day after the practice, I go to the library in my house, back at home, take some dinner, and then coach called me, like, what happened in Ukraine? I said, like, nothing, like everything like the same. And he said, I watched the news, like some crazy happened in Ukraine right now. I said, like, oh, I don't know, I, I don't know nothing. And then, like, for another 20 minutes, another coach called me and had, like, exactly the same question. I started a little bit nervous, worries about my family. And then I came. Okay, I'm called to my mom because I know it's like 5 a.m. in Ukraine. So I just don't want to call because it's like super early for this time. But I'll be like, wherever. It's like maybe a little really something happened. And then I call to my mom. And first thing what I hear, and she crying and tell me Russia attacked us. And like in this moment, I really lose myself. I just like something broke inside me. I don't know how we act in this information because how I say, I believe only in good things. I can't even imagine that like, this can happen. Um, but after this, I was like, okay, my city is like opposite side of all like this situation. Like my Ukraine, like my city close to the border. It's like, from Kiev, it's like eight hours driving with a car, and like from Donetsk and Lugansk, it's like almost like a day of travel. I think, okay, if like Russia attacked Ukraine, my family, my home is like super away from this place. I talked with my mom, I try to say like everything will be fine, but I try to give her like it was super hard. And then I called to my father, Called to my Ukrainian friends, ask him like how they feel. And then I say, okay, everything will be fine, my home away. And then I like hour after I called to my mom again, like to ask like, okay, how my sister doing, like how she doing. And she told me like the airport in my sister in my city just destroyed. The airport is like 10 minutes from my home. And I saw the video, how it's happened, just long fly correctly to the airport. The people is scary, like all this stuff. And after this, I imagine like I'm wrong again. Can not believe the Russian attack Ukraine? I don't believe it's somehow affected my city. And I run twice. And after this, I started really worried about my family. Because I'm in this moment, I really understand, like, it's not a joke. It's not super serious. How is your family, as we're talking here on Monday, uh, how are they? So my mom and my sister, my sister, 11 years old, they crossed the border two days ago. Right now, they're in the training. They're in good, good hands, they're in safety. Well, which, uh, which border? Uh, Kaunas. Lithuania, Lithuania college. Lithuania, okay. So my father, because he worked in police, he can leave Ukraine and because of job. Right now he's in a public safety uh, patrol 
we patrol the city every day from like 10 hours. They have AK-47. They have like all the military uh, equipment. And every day he patrol the city like 10 hours. Right now, like, I worry about him because I was like, his life is dangerous. But what I'm most worried because of his mental health. Because my mom, my family leave the house because of safety. Like, can you imagine, like, today, like, in the world we live in, that my family leave the home because it's dangerous, because they can, like, really die? How crazy it is. My father stay for to, to fight by his home. Like, come on, it's crazy. What, what, like, what time do they to do this? So, Yavion and, and Dimitri, um, you're both from Belarus. Um, not to get mired in the politics of this, but we know Belarus has been helping Russia. So, how, how have you, both of you, dealt with? your emotions on this, you have nothing to do with the governments, but still, how have you dealt it with, with Dilma Volo and, and, and being a good friend and a teammate with everything that's going on back in your country? Um, regarding my position, I haven't lived there for the last seven years. And, uh, you know, now my position becomes clearer and clearer why I didn't do it. You know, and uh, for the safety of our families in this situation, we cannot say, you know, we can say the emotional stuff. We can say what really you think about stuff like that. But the point of that is uh, what is going on is really, it, it's scary. We had some kind of a situation, of course, not even close to similar to work a year ago with our elections when the people were just taken from their houses you go to jail just to express their opinions and that's for freedom of work, you know? But in reality, all of this, you know, right now, especially the Belarusian military forces are being sent to die and the people who I knew, who we were playing with, who we were growing up with, are sent to their certain death in that situation. And uh, just of the scare, like how scary it is. And, you know, Boba tried to, like from here and just, sitting right next to him right now and just hearing those things and you know he tells you this first time we hear and there's the whole time we can read you know the news that coming from there and uh, this is one of the hardest thing where nobody should ever experience what exactly he's going through as much as we know how people want to synthesize him and how much we do the experience of this is something that none of us ever should experience Dimitri? Yeah, adding to Yavian's point, I had a chance to go home in summer to visit my family because of the whole COVID-19 situation for the last year and a half. I didn't have a chance to go home last summer, so I got a chance to go this summer. And from personal experience, I wouldn't say that it was as safe back home as it ever been before, pre-war the war. But especially now, I can agree with all. Well. At first, I didn't believe the fact that Russia actually attacked Ukraine. Because I'm partially Ukrainian, my dad is from Ukraine, and I have half my family living in Ukraine, and the other part live in Belarus. My mom's side live in Belarus, and dad's in Ukraine. So at first, I didn't believe, I didn't believe it too. So I called my dad and I asked him, like, is it true? At first, he wasn't even knew the whole situation himself. So only like after day, two days after, we can actually figure out that we actually work. And it's just, it's just really hard to express like how. I was scared for my family, for my both sides of the families. But like going back to the Belarus part, I'm was really proud of building Belarus at first, but now like I don't understand like why would we be part of part of this and like helping Russia or like open our border or like I just I'm confused. Like why would we like attacking our brothers? Because we've been brothers with Russia for like as as long as I know myself. And I never had any political or any type of issue with them. So it's just really hard to understand and accept. You know, the three of you, I think, are a great example of how sports, especially basketball, as we've seen internationally, brings people together. You could all be from different backgrounds. Your governments could have different conflicts. 
but at the human level, person to person, you get along, your teammates. Do you ever wonder like, why can it exist in this form, but not in others, especially at the governmental level? Uh, I will say you have in Ukraine, you have a revolution like 2014. And when the Belarus revolution happened, me and only everybody in Ukraine feel the pain of Belarus people, how hard it is. And except I know my mom support Belarus so much in this time. They help. She helped my father, my father helped. Everybody I know, like they really like crying for Belarus. And right now in this in this situation, I feel like the same. Like, maybe we have like some political conflict between all these countries, but like people, we how Dmitry say we are brother. The people are connected between Ukraine and Belarus in Russia. Like, no one, no one want to fight. No one want to war. But uh, everything what I want to politics, say to politics, like you need the stumbles. Because only you create this and only you can stumble. People do want to work. And as you said it very correctly, and Dima and Bill, and people are brothers. We never we don't want to fight with each other. But we are like, of course, we can sit here in San Francisco and say all that, but we have our families, our friends there and they are suffering and we're suffering with them. And we, in our generation, we are, we're not responsible for the broken system of 20 years ago. We just not. So stop the war, fix this thing. It's not right. Not, 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 and not a single person will tell you that it's right. And who will say, it's not a quite a smart person. The yeah, people don't deserve to die just because of political conflict of two powerful leaders. People are, not, people are not supposed to be victims of this situation. There's supposed to be another way to solve this issue in a peace way. So all I can say is ask is just please stop the war. And well, that, the blue and yellow flag that's hanging behind you, what, what does it mean to you? For me, it's home. For me, it's my family. I left Ukraine at such a young age, age of 13. Uh, Every day I think about Ukraine because my family lives right there. I'm born in Ukraine. It's my culture, it's my it's my it's my home. For me it's everything. My my family, my father, they fight for Ukraine, I will fight for Ukraine, and my kids will fight for Ukraine. Because it's our home. And lastly, the three of you, and I really appreciate you taking some time here. What has the staff you know, Todd Golden and the staff and, and the community of your team and the school, uh, if you could each answer this, just what it has meant to you during this unbelievable stressful time in what should be, as I said at the top, you know, a celebrated time as you're getting close to potentially being in, you know, the NCAA tournament as the season is winding down. If you could just go down the line, you know, Yalian, Volo, and Dimitri. Uh, I think the most important part is that everybody here cares. You know, and as you said, there's a time of celebration. You know, you have most important games, you have the end of the season and all that stuff coming up together. And just understanding that the staff is here for you and they would do everything in their power to help you to get through it. And uh, as experience is that what I'm what I'm seeing for them doing towards the world, and I've been here, you know, for a long time in WCC in general. Not a lot of people would be as invested as this place is. And uh, from my perspective, I'm really grateful for that, for what they do for him. And uh, it's been awesome. A lot of work, a lot more work to be done. I think to Jürgen's point, as he said, it's a very diverse place, a diverse place. So there's a lot of people from different countries, different cultures. And for them to understand the situation that all of our countries in right now, it's, I really appreciate that for them showing support and being caring and showing their love and support and donating money and doing all those little things that can actually probably not fix, but like improve situation in some type of way. So I'm just really grateful for them being understanding. And, yeah. So I feel huge support 
this one. Everybody, like coaches, players, students, teachers, even like just people who know like from Ukraine. I have like everyday messages. The people ask me, do I need some help? And they really want to help me, help my family, help Ukraine. And everything I can say is thank you for all the support. Like it's really important for me. Like I know like maybe I don't need support, but my family is in Ukraine need support. So for all these people who want to help and help, I say thank you so much. And for people who want to help somehow, please do. If you can, any support in this, in this crazy time. Well, we, we wish your, your father, obviously, safety uh, as he patrols the streets there and, and your mom and your sister, hopefully, are safe in their hopefully temporary location. Um, thinking of all three of you, uh, you're doing a wonderful thing being a team and um, really helping uh, we'll get through this. And hopefully, we'll end sooner than later. Uh, appreciate your time, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you.